hidden quickie. The frustrating thing about the fight for our right to strong encryption is that we already fought and won this back in the 90s. Cryptographer Daniel J. Bernstein brought a series of cases against the United States in coordination with the EFF. The federal government had placed encryption on the United States munitions list alongside bombs and flamethrowers. In the first case, decided in 1996, District Judge Marilyn Hall Patel ruled, Defendants appear to insist that the higher the utility value of speech, the less like speech it is. An extension of that argument assumes that once language allows one to actually do something, like play music or make lasagna, the language is no longer speech. The logic of this proposition is dubious at best. Its support in First Amendment law is non-existent. Also, if computer code isn't expressive, how can it be protected by copyright? Hoist by their own petard! The second case went before the same judge in 1996. She ruled that since computer code is speech, restrictions against prior restraint apply. And since the provisions of the law were invalid, they couldn't prosecute Bernstein. Finally, in 1999, the Ninth Circuit confirmed that software code was free speech protected by the First Amendment and that government regulations preventing its publication were unconstitutional. Quote, Insofar as the regulations on encryption software were intended to slow the spread of secure encryption methods to foreign nations, the government is intentionally retarding the progress of the flourishing science of cryptography. To the extent the government's efforts are aimed at interdicting the flow of scientific ideas, whether expressed in source code or otherwise, these efforts would appear to strike deep into the heartland of the First Amendment. And it wasn't just cryptographers, it affected users too, quote, In this increasingly electronic age, we are all required in our everyday lives to rely on modern technology to communicate with one another. This reliance on electronic communication, however, has brought with it a dramatic diminution in our ability to communicate privately. Cellular phones are subject to monitoring, email is easily intercepted, and transactions over the internet are often less than secure. Something as commonplace as furnishing our credit card number, social security number, or bank account number puts each of us at risk. Whether we are surveilled by our government, by criminals, or by our neighbors, it is fair to say that never has our ability to shield our affairs from prying eyes been at such a low ebb. The availability and use of secure encryption may offer an opportunity to reclaim some portion of the privacy we have lost. Government efforts to control encryption thus may well implicate not only the First Amendment rights of cryptographers intent on pushing the boundaries of science, but also the constitutional rights of each of us as potential recipients of encryption's bounty. The Sixth Circuit ruled the same way in Younger v. Daly in 2000, meaning that we have agreement among the circuits. Let's see if we can get judges to say the same things now.